I'm Larry Walsh, and this is my Outdoor Dining Masterclass for Virtual Chelsea. So to start, we're going to be making hand-tied designs. These are going to form the basis of our scenography as they run along the table. What we have here today are a really lovely selection of spring white blooms. Now, for your designs, you could pop down to your florist, or alternatively, you could just pop into the garden and pick from your favourites. So we'll run you through what we have. Here we've got fragrant sweet peas, followed by textural nigella, some gorgeous hellebores. We have lovely white peonies, spring white ranunculus, fragrant stocks, cow parsley from our walk this morning, and also some textural scabiosa seed pods, along with a little bit of astrantia. So we've got a really lovely combination of flowers that are going to give us a really lovely textural effect. To begin, we will start by conditioning the flowers that we have. So in order to do that, we're going to take away some of the leaves and some of the excess that we don't need from the stem in order to make sure that as we make the hand tie, these elements aren't being tied together as that will create a bacteria that will reduce the life of your centerpiece. So simply taking away the little buds and the little leaves that we don't need and then we'll leave the last quarter to a third at the top. With hellebores we'll just very simply take away the odd leaf that we don't need or any of the flowers that sit just too far down the stem. It feels horrible to say but we need to make sure that everything sits at around about the same height so that as we make the design it's really neat and compact. With blousy peonies We'll simply take away the excess leaves on the stem because the flower heads are just so beautiful that we'll be able to celebrate those on their own. So with ranunculus, we're going to take away the buds lower down the stem that we don't need. These would sit too low on the design, so it won't be seen anyway. So simply take away by holding the stem securely and just be careful as you work with these because spring stems are notoriously soft and incredibly delicate. With the strantia we're going to do exactly the same thing. So we're going to take away any of the flowers that sit too low. So these at the top are perfect but these ones here aren't going to be seen in the design. So we'll just take those out and make sure that everything else remains. Now with stocks, I like to take away the leaves at the base, but in order to make the design neat, I also like to take away the very green bit at the top. So we're left with only the white flower. So once again, we'll take away the leaves from the stem and then we'll just nip off the top to leave the best part of the flower. It's really important at the beginning of any task that you take the time to condition these flowers. This will ensure that they last for the maximum amount of time once you've actually got your designs on the table. Now we're ready to get started. We're going to begin with our largest bloom, the peony, and we're going to place that in the middle of our design. We're then going to take one of our stocks and using your left hand, you're going to place the stock over the peony stem at an angle. You'll then pinch that and twist. And we'll add in our next flower. Again, over the top of the stem before, pinch and twist. We'll then continue to add our flowers in. And we're looking to keep all of the 
all of the flower heights roughly the same so that as we make the design and as it builds up it's incredibly neat and compact but full of texture sweet peas are one of my absolute favorites i always add those a little higher into the design because the flowers are so delicate and you don't want those to get lost now what's important to do with your ranunculus is to start adding those in very carefully to the design but nestling them in and amongst because they're soft stems the spring stems they're totally beautiful but they're very soft and delicate so you want to make sure that they don't get crushed by anything else as you're making the piece so if we nestle those a little further in we'll make sure that they're protected it's a really good idea when you're making a textural design to think about the shapes and the sizes of the flowers that you're using it's really really lovely obviously to get impact to use some larger blooms but you need to balance those against the small ones as well to make sure there's not too much of a difference so that everything makes sense and it looks balanced at the end so we'll add in our stocks which give a little bit of volume that's a little too high for me so i'm just going to nip off the top because i want to see the best bit of the flower And then these scabiosa seed pods I just absolutely adore. They're very small flowers, but they just give such a wonderful texture. And the best part about flowers for me is all of their different individual qualities coming together. That's what really makes it special. And as we're working, we're now starting to think about the shape that we're creating as we're slightly coming to the end. We've got a few more ingredients left, but now we're looking at the overall shape that we have. And we're starting to round that off. So it looks neat and organized, but with lots of texture and movement. And last up, the sweet peas. So, dance those around the edge. wonderful frilly little petals there's nothing nice than plucking these from the garden and then popping them in a vase so you can enjoy them in the house the last one in just like that perfect so the only two pieces of equipment that you'll need today scissors and some twine, which we've all got in the garden. Really nice and simple. Double up the twine, wrap it around the stems. And this is why you've protected those lovely soft spring stems, because you're now going to pull it nice and tight, lay him down. Wrap around the stems. tie him a little knot this will keep everything exactly where you want it and then in order to go into our vase we're just going to snip the stems straight across so that they're nice and flat We take our vase, going to pop him in, check the height. I think we'll take a little more off. If you need to reduce the size again, just hold the design in your left hand. Snip straight across the base. and pop into your vase. That's perfect. Now don't worry if you make a mess. Floristry is very messy. And there we go, number one done.
Next up, let's start adding a touch of height to the sonography. We've got our main designs done already, and they're gonna form the most substantial part of the tablescape. But now we're just gonna add a little bit extra height so that really dances along the table. So very simply, we're going to take favorite stems from the designs we've already created. So here we've got some sweet peas, and we're going to just add those very casually into the stem vases. The lovely thing about this look is that you can do absolutely anything you'd like. You've got substantial low pieces created already, and then these stem vases are really just about adding a little bit of fun and whimsy as they go along the table. So there's no right or wrong. You can make them as tall or as short as you'd like for your comfort. So we'll use the sweet peas first, which are my favorites. Simply cut them to any length you'd like. And a mix of heights is really fun. And this is a really lovely fast way to dress the table. So anything that you may have already got from the garden, anything that you've found on a walk, or anything that you've bought to go along with the scheme can just be slipped into place and it's a really nice way of doing things, especially if you're in a hurry, just before guests arrive. It's always a really nice idea, get all of your ingredients lined up before you get started, and that way it's really nice and fast to put everything together. Let's so add a few more touches of the astrantia in here beautiful small flower. As I said before, it goes a really long way and it creates a wonderful look. And there we have it, fast stem vases, ready to now start assembling the table. Now we have our vases and our stem vases done. Just before we start laying the table, a really couple of quick details to add on to the napkins for all of your guests. These are super fast and easy to do, but actually one of my favorite things because I just think they add such a personal touch. So, I went into the garden and I've just taken some rosemary. What we're going to do is add a couple of quick sprigs once you've cut your stem, just pull off the excess of what you don't need and that will leave you with a really nice, neat stem. We'll take a few of those, group them together, just pinch, it's incredibly fast and easy. We'll add in some white astrantia from earlier and if you've been clever, save off all the little bits that we picked when we conditioned the flowers early on and then nothing goes to waste. And I've just got a spare white ranunculus from our earlier designs. So I'm gonna add that in too. Now, with a small piece of twine wrapped very quickly around the base of the stem and then tied off in a knot, we have a tiny little nosegay It's perfect to go onto each napkin. What we need to do, trim off the twine, trim off the excess stems at the bottom, and voila, incredibly fast, but really effective. So, now that all of our vases, stem vases, and napkin details are complete, it's time for us to start building this table. We're going to gather a few different accessories from around the house, candlesticks, votives, exactly in the same way that you will at home. You can merge those in any which way that you please, but I'm just gonna show you how easy it is to now start bringing all of these beautiful, sumptuous designs together.
And there you have it, one outdoor tablescape perfect for any celebration this summer. As you can see, you have got low designs running throughout. We've got taller elements, and then we've got our beautiful accessories that are dotted through to really bring this whole scheme to life. And don't forget your small napkin details that really finish off every single place setting. So whether you are at home this summer as a family or inviting people over, this is the perfect masterclass for you to get involved with all of the family.